and welcome to Daily Spark TV. Today we are talking about the paradoxical life of a Christian. My guest today is Larry E. Ford. So let me tell you a little bit more about Larry. Larry lives in rural southwest Georgia. With 50 years in ministry, Larry has his undergraduate degree in German and theology, his postgraduate degrees in theology and education administration, a professional certificate in English literature. Larry formally incorporated the Seventh-day Christian Assembly, this is a non-Adventist organization, in 1994. During the past 20 years, he has written a considerable offering of Christian education, literature, and outreach materials, which he offers for free to the general public. He is also the author of God Accused or Defended. Solving the Unsolvable Paradox. I know, great title. Welcome to the show, Larry. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Now, I love the title of your book, and the part that I love most is the paradox of it all. When we talk about theology, religion, spirituality, and the likes, you get two sides of every coin, and some people even want to split one side of a coin. So today, I'd love to kind of pick your brain about the various paradoxes. Um, Many people will say that we live in a world that is filled with uh, sarcasm, sarcasm that's filled with uh, bad stuff, with burdens, with dealing with the ups and downs of life. Where's the good stuff in, in the life that we live? Is it true that we're living in this juxtaposition of left and right, of black and white, of good and bad all the time? The simple answer is yes. <laughs> and we could go no further unless you really want to know. Uh, the problem goes back, you know, I, I believe in, in, in investigating and starting at where the original problem occurs. Mm -hmm. And you find that uh, the Bible offers that to you. As a matter of fact, it offers you three places that specifically deal with the beginning. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1-1. Mm -hmm. um, Ephesians, I mean, John 1, 1 through 3, in the, word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God and with God, uh, and He created all that exists. But the most ancient beginning is in Ephesians 1, verses 1 through 14, and it shows what God's original plan was, that he would create a creature, that he would offer adoption into his family through Jesus Christ, and his expectation in creating this creature would be that he would be uh, holy, blameless, and loving. So this was all constructed before the creation of the orderly universe. And that's what Paul says in verse 4. So when you get to the actual event where the human is, is uh, created, placed in the garden, he's given a choice between two trees, mm -hmm. the tree of life and the tree of the fruit of the knowledge mm -hmm. of good and evil. And he says, he doesn't tell him to choose between them. He says, avoid mm -hmm. the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil because that leads to death. Mm -hmm. Take the tree of life because that leads to life much more than just our present physical mm -hmm. existence. Well, they muffed it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, incidentally, he anticipated that mm -hmm. uh, because another beginning is shown in 1 Peter 1, 1 through, uh, 18 through 20, where it says that Jesus Christ was ordained to the office of Savior before the creation of the orderly universe. Mm -hmm. So they anticipated mm -hmm. that the human, given an independent mind, mm -hmm. might very well muff it. Mm -hmm. And isn't that such a great parent where you know, yes. I'm going to give you the option, 
but just in case you drop the ball, I'm prepared on yes. the other end. Yes. I love that. I love that. Now, what are some of the most um, perplexing issues that have been um, presented to you or um, your congregants or people have come to you since you work in ministry? Like, I just need help with this. What, what do I do with this? Well, it, it's difficult to say what the two most important would be, but I can tell you, you know, the, the old KISS formula, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. I think the two most uh, urgent and perplexing things that affect people are life mm -hmm. and death. Mm -hmm. And in order to uh, understand how you cope with both of those realities, you have to understand of what life consists mm -hmm. and of what death consists. Mm -hmm. Now, when when uh, the Lord God told Adam that eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil mm -hmm. would lead to death, he was talking about eternal destruction. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking about the one time that we die mm -hmm. and wait for the resurrection, eternal destruction. Mm -hmm. That's a perplexing issue. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we need to learn God's thoughts and ways so we know how to handle that kind of thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and learn how to overcome mm -hmm. those perplexing things. That is so true because we are reminded in Scripture that His ways are not our ways. Right. So we, we really do need to learn how to take a step back and understand what is it that God has planned for us, not just what do we have planned for us. Right. I love it. I love it. Well, it's time for us to take a very short break, but don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Daily Spark TV. All right, I have to ask the question that I know everyone always asks, and that is, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, the mirror question of that is, why do good things happen to bad people? <laughs> uh, and this is the quandary that uh, a lot of people uh, face. They, the question, uh, that is probably has been most frequently asked in society from ancient times to present is, how does a, an all-knowing, all-loving, uh, giving uh, and omnipresent God tolerate natural and moral evils in his perfect creation? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not as though God does not have a remedy for it, mm -hmm. because as I pointed out in the earlier section, uh, even before the creation of the orderly universe, he had a Christ, a Savior, ready for the coming creation. And that means that even before the first individual was created, Grace was already in place. Mm -hmm. Mercy mm -hmm. was already in place. So um, the question is how you, if you think uh, it's bad for good things to happen to evil people, don't become evil just so you can get <laughs> good things. <laughs> if you think bad things happen to good people, mm -hmm. you know, same thing applies. Mm -hmm. uh, these are uh, these are situations of life that we will have to tolerate because of the first offering of life mm -hmm. was refused in favor of self righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be our own moral compasses. Uh, we are bright enough and wonderful enough and educated enough to know what's good and what's evil. Mm -hmm. Love the good, eschew the evil. Mm -hmm. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, a penalty has been imposed. And that penalty is described by the Apostle Paul in Romans 1, 
24, 26, and 28, where he says God turned them over to the consequences of their sins. Mm -hmm. That means from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you are going to experience what it means to live in a society that has this constant mixture of good and evil in its thinking. Mm -hmm. You're going to, to experience the consequences of those things. And it's not there strictly for punishment, it's there for education. Mm -hmm. Because God wants you to know that that kind of society and that kind of frame of mind will not survive, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. ultimately, over into eternity. Now, kind of along that same vein, there are people who have an understanding that um, Christians can live a really great life, but we still get sick and we experience this illness because of original sin, that there's nothing that we could really do about it. But some people disagree with that. When we're talking about trying to figure out the paradox of what is my fault and what isn't my fault, how much do I blame on Adam and Eve with all of this, how do we make that right side up instead of being upside down? Well, in the first place, uh, blaming everything on Adam and Eve is, is wrong-headed. <laughs> uh, they were just the first independent minds that made the wrong choice, descended from them Mm -hmm. multiple generations and uh, what Isaiah says in Isaiah 53 around verse 5 or 6 he says all we like sheep have gone astray each to his own path mm -hmm. we have sinned mm -hmm. and because we have sinned you have I have mm -hmm. anybody uh, John says in first John uh, that the person who says I haven't sinned is a liar and the truth is not in him. <laughs> so we have all participated in the same kind of, of mental approach, spiritual approach to life, what we think is life, mm -hmm. our present existence, we've all participated in that thing called sin because we have chosen to eat uh, and experience the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And God is going to give us a good education and along the way, he is going to, in that education, he is providing a way to be saved out of it mm -hmm. so that you can experience life beyond this present temporary existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, for the person who is new to the faith, be it that they are a babe in Christ or uh, a newbie to Christianity, however you want to say that, and they're they've been given the directive of the first thing you can do is read your Bible every day. That might be a daunting task for someone who's new. How should they read their Bibles? Is there a particular place? Do they literally start in Genesis and read through Revelation? Or is there a, a better plan or a better um, daily way to tackle that? Okay, there's, there's, a, there's a better plan. Um, for instance, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 16, that there are things that the eye has not seen, the ear heard, or have entered into the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. You know, not just the mind, but into the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. And that is not given to the beginners. Mm -hmm. The beginner has to build a foundation of understanding, and faith, and trust, knowledge of, the thoughts and ways of God. That doesn't necessarily begin in Genesis, but that is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, he says that, that uh, it's given to those who are spiritually mature. Mm -hmm. Now you have to understand Paul teaches that you're a babe in Christ, mm -hmm. feeding on the milk of the Word, but you're not expected to continue in the milk. You're expected to get to the meat to at the meat. some point. <laughs> you know, get drawn from the breast and mm -hmm. put on the meat. And, the, and, and, and what a lot of people do is they stay too long on the milk mm -hmm. or they stay only on the milk. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you need to understand is what Paul subsequently says. God reveals to you those mm -hmm. more spiritual things. And not that he doesn't reveal to you the beginning things, but he mm -hmm. reveals to you the more spiritual things. Uh, by communicating 
his spirit with your spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you are a beginner, you need to learn to approach God to admit your ignorance mm -hmm. and your dependence on him for giving you the understanding. The second thing is in Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. I love this one. Uh, Isaiah says, to whom will he give understanding? And he says, those that are drawn from the breast. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. understanding comes as you age. A absolutely. As you grow in the grace and knowledge absolutely. of Jesus Christ. So he says, he says, and here's the way it goes. It will be precept by precept, mm -hmm. line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now, you've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you where to start because I don't know what your individual needs are. Right. But you, you've got to start somewhere and you've got to start with a commitment to give your life and your spirit over to this more powerful source mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to guide and direct. Mm -hmm. It's an esoteric thing, but as you grow, in mm -hmm. wisdom and understanding, you will begin to get more and more uh, familiar with it. And I can say that uh, I'm still growing as much as people might want to praise me for all the great things <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, I'm still growing. Uh, as a matter of fact, this understanding about the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil mm -hmm. just occurred to me last night when I was trying to figure out answers for your questions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, otherwise, I had been talking about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fruit is the emphasis there because there are consequences to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to give you time to ponder that wonderful answer. I love that. Where are you? Are you still on the milk? Are you ready for some meat? We'll be back right after this. Hello, I'm Larry Ford, pastor of the Seventh Day Christian Assembly, and I am the author of God Accused or Defended, a theodicy that thoroughly explains why good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people, why natural and moral evils exist in God's uh, creation. And you can get this book from Westbow Press, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and if you will write me an email at larry.ford at hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S, dot net, uh, I can send you a signed copy of it, uh, and I hope that you will because this answers a lot of very important questions about good and evil in God's creation. And we are back. Welcome back to Daily Spark TV. So Larry, many people will say we are living in the end times and it is time that we act appropriately. However, many generations have said we're now living in end times. So perhaps we're living in more end times than previous generations have. But how do we live a life that we feel that we want to live and that you want to pursue a certain career, you want to have a family, those types of things, but still live a life that honors God? Well, uh, it is true that we are living in the end times mm -hmm. as opposed to where we, <laughs> you know, from where we started. Um, the, the idea, for instance, uh, that has been given out recently by some congressional members that uh, the world is going to end in 12 years. I can tell them no. <laughs> uh, the world is not going to end in 12 years. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, because God created it and, and created it for eternity, the world uh, as you know, the physical planet mm -hmm. and inhabitants on the planet and so mm -hmm. forth is not going to end in 12 years. A lot of the present inhabitants might end before 12 <laughs> years, uh, but not that. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, the, the concept, for instance, if, if somebody tells you, well, Jesus can come tonight. No, Jesus can't. He won't come tonight. I've been saying since 1994 <laughs> that he won't come for 
certain period of time, and I have been prepared to say today that uh, he probably will not come till 2025, mm -hmm. and that's because I know what mm -hmm. Scripture says. Now, how do you build a life in our present world to uh, deal with that and what you want to be and what you want to do? Present aspirations are for a temporary world. Mm -hmm. uh, God does not dictate to you what you should be or, or become unless it's something that is sinful in the mixture mm -hmm. of good and evil. Mm -hmm. You've got to be holy, blameless, and loving. Uh, his greatest concern is that you achieve the ultimate potential that he has planned for you to be adopted into his family through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that means that in that adoption process, at some point, you are going to be changed from flesh and blood to spirit to be in that, in that family. And uh, so what you have to make up your mind about in, in your present condition is how long do you want to live? Do you want to live temporary and, and all your plans and dreams and all that are just focused on the temporary? Uh, I mean, as good as they might be and, and significant as they might be, or do you want to live forever? Mm -hmm. and, and I think the wise person would choose the tree of life mm -hmm. in that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Scripture tells us that we are to love our neighbors, to help the widowed and the orphaned. Um, there's someone saying, I don't know how to do that, or how do I get started? I'm, I'm ready to hit this reset button or become more involved in my faith. What are some ways that we do those things that Scripture tells us to do? Okay. I was a, a nursing home administrator for about three years in two different nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they love volunteers. And the mm -hmm. elderly love to see young people come through and, and visit with them, take up time with them. Uh, you, can, you can donate time and money to uh, shelters for abused women and children. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can donate time and money to uh, the elderly associations, to the wounded warriors, to the p police benevolent funds, or you can go work uh, in a soup kitchen or, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, find your niche mm -hmm. and, and, and get involved and love it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most important thing to do is, is whatever you do, do it with your might. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, it, it's nerve-wracking at first, but you'll learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, every novice is nervous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell how nervous mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love it when you're at certain stores and um, they have their name tag on, mm -hmm. and underneath it says, um, like, I'm new, or it's my first day, or whatever. And I always like to tell that person, it's like, you know what, we were all new at our jobs at some particular time, so you know what, take your time. You know, if you don't know what to do, just say, I'm new at this, I don't know how to do this. I'll just take my time, you know, sit back, and let you work through it, because I think that that's what we all need, is just permission. Yeah to be new and to be able to work through it until we're no longer that, that novice, we're no longer that newbie there. Now, along kind of that same vein, for the person who says, okay, so I've been told that scripture is basic instructions before leaving earth, that everything that I need to know is right here in the Bible, but I don't see the subject that I'm looking for in the concordance. How do we learn how to not be so word specific sometimes, but how do we um, train ourselves to go to the Bible first, to find the answer, to find the directive that God has given to us for the various things we need to deal with? Okay, well, you will not find in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, 
by that thick, mm -hmm. you will not find the word abortion. It's nowhere in the Bible. You will not find the word smoking. <laughs> you know, regular mm -hmm. tobacco or pot or anything else. You know, mm -hmm. uh, wacky backy, <laughs> peyote or whatever. You will not find uh, any kind of instruction uh, about those two subjects chewing tobacco, snuff, or all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does that mean that God has said whatever's not in the Bible, you can, you can work? No. Mm -hmm. uh, here's what you do. You, you try to come to understand the principles that God, the, you know, the spirit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what uh, God is trying to teach us. Now, if God teaches you that your body, as a believer, that your body is the temple of Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, as he, as he gives you Holy Spirit to understand his thoughts and ways, then it says that you are to treat that body accordingly. With everything that you have learned in your life, with all of your experiences, how has your faith played into all of that? Well, I realize that my faith is a work in progress mm -hmm. and will be forever. It mm -hmm. will be a work in progress. Uh, it is not something that, that God gives to us by twanging us with a magic twanger. Mm -hmm. Going, mm -hmm. you know, oh Lord, give me faith. Mm -hmm. Doing. Mm -hmm. God doesn't work that way. The way God works in faith is sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes you have to think. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to just uh, immerse yourself in sorting out uh, all the connections in Scripture, precept upon precept, line upon and so forth. Um, that's, that's the part that, that my faith has played because my faith has moved me from the milk to the meat, mm -hmm. and I have found, as you will understand from childbirth to the end mm -hmm. of your life, there's a lot more meat <laughs> than there is milk. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you're content to, to allow your faith to be a shriveled up little pile of, of mm -hmm. uh, it's like the guy said, who was the first person who ever looked at that thing and says, Wonder what I think I'll just drink the first thing that comes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're content to mm -hmm. to settle for that nipple mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the rest of your life, then then so be it. But so, boy, boy, there's, there's so, so much, much more, more <laughs> so that that much cow more. can offer than, yes. <laughs> than just and, that. And mm -hmm. it goes it goes well beyond this present existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love I love that I love that, and I, I think that for so many people they um, they're only looking at the moments of now. They're mm -hmm. not looking at how does this not only affect me in this moment, but how does this affect future generations? How does this affect those that are around us? What are the lessons that we, that we can learn, not just from my experiences, but from our collective experiences? Mm -hmm. And being able to spend time with each other and have those conversations is, is so important. Well, Larry Ford, thank you so much for spending time on Daily You're Spark so TV I today. Enjoyed it I enjoyed you being on the show as well. Thank you so much for that. Okay. And listeners, thank you so much for tuning in, for viewing another episode of Daily Spark TV. I hope that I have inspired, empowered, and enlightened you. Until next time, everyone, be blessed in the Lord. <laughs>